Hi everyone. Today I decided it'd be fun to get back to basics a little bit and look at what you can do without having a big telescope or the world's best camera um, and that kind of thing and still get some fun images of the sky from you know your backyard in maybe not even a, a super great dark area. So these pictures that we're gonna be looking at today, uh, I took from the backyard. And what we're getting back to is just the concept of star trails. Um, that's normally where a lot of people start. And you know, funnily enough, the deeper you get into the hobby, the less and less you want any star trailing to happen. But it is really one of the easiest kinds of setups that you can do. Um, and one of the benefits is most of the work is done for you just by the sky itself. So for me, uh, I actually had never really taken a full star trail picture before. And so I was kind of just deciding, okay, I'm going to test it out with some equipment that I just have around that, uh, I'm getting ready actually to upgrade into some newer things for, for Milky Way shots. But uh, but let's see what I can do with what I've got. And, and I think that's a good place for people to start in general. So to take star trail photos, you know, really all you need is a camera that has the ability to take somewhat of a long exposure, 30 seconds or so, um, and can take those exposures one after another after another. And so to show you what I've used for that, kind of go through my gear here. Uh, and it starts off with the my, uh, my old DSLR, which is just the Canon Rebel T1i. So this is, you know, the very kind of entry level DSLR from Canon that was new, you know, eight or nine or more years ago, that kind of thing. And you can still find it used for, you know, pretty cheap overall. Um, and then lens wise, um, I'll admit I'm using a little bit more expensive lens, but I think you could do, you know, stuff that looks, you know, fairly decent uh, on this, even with just the kit lens that might come with the camera. But uh, for me, I'm using the Samyang 14 millimeter ultra wide angle lens. This is one that I recently purchased um, just for Milky Way shots, right? I wanted to get as wide as possible for the Milky Way. It also, you know, gives you a nice wide image when you're doing your star trails. Uh, and this lens was recommended uh, for being pretty sharp uh, and pretty free of, of errors uh, when you're doing, you know, Milky Way shots, that kind of thing. So this is kind of my first time trying that lens out. Then you're going to need a tripod. So I'm just using a tripod I got from Best Buy, you know, a while back, you know, relatively cheap. Um, you know, I could probably even go with the, the you know, model lower or whatnot um, for it without too much of a trouble. But for the star trails, you do really want to make sure that your camera isn't going to be shaking around, um, you know, by either people walking by or wind or something. So a good tripod uh, is, is worth having there. And, you know, the, the better the tripod, the more stable your images are going to be. And then lastly, you need a shutter release cable. So you can get, you know, any kind of one. This is a universal one from Best Buy for $15. I have one that has an intervalometer built in. So it's just a little bit of a timer if you want to do like time lapse uh, type stuff on uh, with delays and things. But in the case of Star Trails, all you're going to need is the, the shutter release cable that uh, and just about all of them have some sort of lockup. So you push the button to open the shutter and then, you know, you flip a part of it or move it up or something. And then the, that button stays down. Um, now that doesn't actually hold the shutter itself open. You're going to set that in your camera to say, I want to take 30 second exposures. You have predefined that time, but by holding the shutter down, uh, it's just going to continuously take the image, the next image after the one that you just took ended by, uh, in whatever camera you have, you've got a one shot mode and a continual shooting mode where it'll just take picture after picture as long as you hold that shutter down. Um, and that's really what the shutter release cable does for you is it lets you lock that shutter down and then walk away. Uh, so you don't have to sit there and try to hold the button down for the whole time you're doing this. So you set all this up, you know, the camera and the tripod and everything, and you set it into the backyard. Uh, and then, you know, literally make sure you point it a part of the sky. Most folks, when they're doing star trails, like to use 
uh, the north as the way to go because that'll give you the tighter circles, you know, because obviously the North Star isn't going to move much. Uh, and then the rest of them will move around it. But you can get some really neat photos if you're looking more towards the equator, even south, as the curves will change based on, you know, kind of where they are in that rotation. Um, but for me, I just wanted to do it easily. I hadn't really done this before, so I just pointed it toward the north. I think that's North Star up there. Um, and, you know, kind of mess around with your exposure and that kind of thing until you can see a decent number of stars. Now, there aren't a whole heck of a lot here because I am under a lot of light pollution. And honestly, earlier I started this before it was even fully 100% dark. Um, but get that in there. I also recommend doing some sort of kind of framing or other objects in there just to, to kind of break it up, um, you know, to really show that you were you were looking at the sky and to give some scale to things. And then after that, like I said, you're going to, you know, use that shutter release cable uh, and then have it take a bunch of images. So in my case, I took about 244, I think, total. Um, I would have taken more, but uh, I didn't realize that my memory card was so old and I just figured the battery would run out uh, at first. But nope, my memory card filled up uh, because I was shooting them all in RAW initially. Uh, shooting them in RAW lets you do some other things uh, in Adobe Camera RAW in, in Photoshop to kind of do some manual exposure adjustments. But I think even as long as you can see the stars on the back of the camera, you're probably good enough uh, from there um, to just use the JPEGs. And, and I converted all my RAWs over into JPEGs. Um, and, you know, at this point, okay, great. I've got a bunch of pictures individually of the stars. How do I show the trailing? Well, uh, you can do this in Photoshop with kind of a button click, but before we do that, I'm going to show you guys a, a free piece of software that is really nice for this, and that's called Star Stacks. So if you just do a, a Google search for Star Stacks, uh, Marcus Enzweiler here uh, in Germany uh, coded this. It's a pretty simple application. You can download it for Mac or Windows um, and Linux as well, those kinds of things. And you know, it's pretty straightforward. When you open that up, you're going to pick the images that you, you know, that you turned into JPEGs, and then you run the process button. And there's a couple of options on it that, <clears throat> excuse me, that will uh, will go ahead and automatically combine all those images together. Um, in Photoshop, you can also do this if you own Photoshop, and literally all all that you're looking at for that is you want to select all the images and then right above the layers you have what kind of combine do I want to do on those layers. The normal one just kind of has the top layer and then everything else below it. Uh, but if you do lighten it will combine kind of the light parts of the image and that's really all you got to do. Turn that on and now you've got your star trails. You know this is about an hour and a half. Um, now the fun thing is, is not only do I have my star trails, I have my plane trails all over the place too. And, you know, really this is where you can just stop, right? Oh, I've, you know, I've got some nice trails there. I actually really like how those look. Um, and for, for some of you, maybe you really like showing the airplane trails as well. I actually kind of like this one almost reminds me of the, the Disney monorail or something with the curve going through there. Um, but in my case, I, I do think they're taking away from the image, especially since, you know, being under such light pollution, I don't have as many stars showing up as I would in, in a darker sky site. So, you know, how do I get rid of those? Well, if you're using star stacks, the easiest way is you can go through one image at a time, just kind of tabbing on each one of these and looking for when those trails appear. Um, now, in my case, I had already kind of done this work to go through, um, but I know I've got a few images in a row here where that big one comes through. And so on any one of those, you can just check it to include it in the process or uncheck it. So I've gone through and unchecked these. If you look through, I've got little ones with parts of airplane trails kind of all over the place. And I can just uncheck them and then run the run the stack again. Now, 
once I do that, when you run the stack, you can you can actually see it building the trail as it goes, which is one thing I think is really cool about this program, um, and in some ways a little bit more fun uh, than Photoshop on its own. And you just let it go through, and depending on how many images you have and how fast your computer is, it'll take it a little while. Um, but I'm just having it go through, and I've turned off those ones with the big, obvious plain trails that were right in the center. I kind of left on the ones down here because I didn't want to you know, go and mess and find every one of them just for this. But so then you'll let it run. And there we go. We're done. 200 of my 240 some odd images were the ones that were still checked on. And now I'm looking at that output image. Um, but if you notice between this and the one in Photoshop, if you look at the actual trail now, I've got gaps in it. And so this does have a mode called gap filling. Um, and I think it in general it can work pretty well. But I ended up removing so many of these because I have so many planes going through. My gaps were really large. And, you know, even with the gap filling, it didn't really fill them in very well. So what is another way that I could do this? You know, I want, I really do want the smooth kind of trails if I can get them or as smooth as possible, but I still want to get, I really like the look of this versus this better. I feel like the stars just kind of, uh, just kind of pop out more on the other one. So how, how the heck can I get rid of these guys? Well, that is something that, uh, I kind of played around with. I didn't really know how to do when I first looked at this and I, I did a little bit of looking at on online and saw a few different ways that people talked about doing it. and I'll kind of show you the one that I like here. So the first one is I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer in Photoshop, just a blank layer. And then I'm going to set up a black brush. That's roughly, you know, the size of the trails that I'm trying to get rid of. And essentially, you know, this is just a normal layer at this point. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of, paint over this oh okay i was wondering why it took a second there it was just being a little slow let me undo from where i was i'm just gonna kind of draw right over these lines it doesn't have to be perfect because at the end of the day i'm going to use this to subtract from one image but because i'm using this lighten mode you know, if it's black, it won't count. It's not going to really do much uh, to change the overall end image when it's a black line. Um, if I was using a white line, it would, you know, completely mess it up. Um, but I'm just going to go through and get rid of, just go ahead and kind of paint over these. And I'm doing this with my mouse, so it just kind of looks terrible from like my seven-year-old would be very impressed. I'm not going to paint over this one because if you notice this is on a curve, this actually is a bright star in my images just out towards the edge. And then, oh, and I missed one up here. So you can see I'm on the flight path. We get plenty of planes coming through here. And if I was looking at the south, it would be even worse. Um, but okay, I think that takes care of most of those there. And so now I've got a layer that is just kind of a chicken scratch going over all of these. But what I can do with that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the visibility for all the other layers here. So now I just have my kind of overlay. And because I did this for all the star trail, or all the plane trails now, I'm just gonna go ahead and make a copy of this because I'm going to use this a couple of different times. I won't do it all in this video, but in general, I'm going to do it once and then show you, you know, that this could be reused uh, for any of the, the pictures that have the trails. So after that, right now, I'm going to scroll through just to find the bright ones that I'm that are the bright one that I really want to get rid of. But what you would do if you were really doing this is you kind of go through and figure out all of the individual images that have a plane trail piece in them that you want to remove. Um, in my case, I'm just going to deal with three of them here and I'll turn off the uh, very top layer. Oh, sorry, I made a copy, I have two of them now. Turn off the top layer. These are the ones that created 
this big guy, the one that's really bright and in the center. And so what I want to do at the end of the day is I want to have those three images together and then I just want to cover up where the plane trail might be. Now, I've noticed here actually I didn't quite catch it all. So I'll just kind of draw back over that again. So maybe I'll want to make a new, well, I won't need to. I'll use this first one and then that'll be good enough. So covered up that trail pretty well. And now I have my kind of black overlay and I've got the three images that make up that trail all together. And so I'm just gonna select those images specifically. So hold down my control key, select those three, move up to the top, control key one more time to select that top one. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and merge just the visible layers. So I don't wanna merge all the ones I've turned off, I'm just gonna merge the visible ones. And once I do that, now those three images that I was showing earlier are now combined with that one layer I had before. So there's a little bit, you know, let me try to zoom in here. There's a little bit of star trailing on some of these other ones for the three images worth that it was. And, that, and then black over anywhere that there would have been a, uh, a plane trail. So okay that's great for those three but then what about for everything else well so let me turn on the other layers again so now all those layers are turned on but once again remember at the beginning of this the whole key was to use that lighten piece so i'm going to add in that additional layer and instead of saying normal i'll change it back to lighten and now you can see just like we had before everything's together except magically that image is gone but if you notice my actual trails here don't have kind of a chop in them or that same chop there there is probably a little bit of a gap exactly where i was drawing the black line but because a black line never happened over say this bright one here it's still got to use that part of the uh, of the image that I had there. So there's, you know, it's really going to minimize the gaps uh, that are going to come out here, and they're only going to be on those specific images. Now, in my case, I decided to use, you know, kind of put all of the trails uh, in one image. But if you wanted to, you could do this one by one, right? And for each uh, each set of images that you're going to do that on, you could just paint over. Uh, for that and, and do it. I think in this case, I'm probably going to end up with something that's just fine, especially given that, that this is almost kind of more of a test shot for me um, to do them all at once. And then I can just kind of reuse a copy of each one as I'm going. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, though, you know, comparing that against the trails here. So in this case, um, let me just go ahead and turn on, I think it was these three yeah so you know i'm going to start processing this from the back here so you'll see that come through you know i i really do think having this removed um from what i've got is going to help now at the end of the day like i said i kind of like this one line but i really didn't like all the other stuff that really starts creeping in over the rest of the course of the image so who knows maybe i will decide to leave that one in when i'm done and those are some of the artistic decisions you can kind of make uh you know once you have that stack of images together but the the cool thing here in comparison to a lot of other photo types that I see for, for astrophotography and trying to learn how to do them is this doesn't require, you know, an, a thousand dollar or five thousand dollar mount, right? It doesn't require a big old telescope. <clears throat> yes, I'm using a little bit nicer lens to get a little bit wider field, but I have a crop sensor camera. You know, if you bought a full frame camera for, for daytime photography or something like that, you're going to get a bigger field of view on pretty much whatever lens you use versus what I have. Um, and there are other wider angle lenses that you could use that, that are, you know, maybe a little bit cheaper. 
doesn't have to be the greatest thing in the world. You just need to be able to kind of manually focus in on those stars and keep everything steady and then keep that, that shutter open. Um, so, you know, switching back to kind of where I am on this one here, you know, I'm really happy with, with how this is turning out. And, you know, I'm going to keep kind of messing around with these trails here. And when I finally uh, publish the image uh, or publish the, the video here, uh, the thumbnail that I'll use for the image will be the, the overall uh, trails themselves. Um, and at the end of this video also, um, I'll leave a little bit of time with the final one once I've cleaned it all up. Uh, but I encourage you guys to try out the Star Trails ones. You know, it's super easy to do. Uh, it's a, a lot of fun, uh, especially, you know, maybe you've got your scope and stuff set up taking pictures of something else and you just happen to have a DSLR camera. Well, if you're already out at night and it's dark skies and you got the battery and memory card for it, may as well throw it on there. You know, it's a it's a nice set of images that are honestly kind of hard to to screw up from a technical perspective. The weather may not cooperate with you, uh, but you can you know get it in there. And this, like I said, this was only about an I think an hour hour and a half maybe. Um, you know, well actually two hundred forty, so about two hours worth of of thirty second exposures, um, and it looks pretty good. You know, would it look even better at four hours, five hours, or eight hours? Sure. But for, you know, from the backyard under, you know, my kind of crummy skies and everything like that, I'm super happy with how this is looking. So I encourage everyone to, to give that a try. Don't overlook the stuff that's easier just because you're up for a challenge on the harder stuff, too. Um, and until next time, I wish everybody clear skies and, you know, enjoy the final image. Thanks.